Okay. So file handling is uh, one of the famous topic. Uh, when you want to deal with you know data, generally in the testing you will store in the files like uh, text files or uh, Excel sheet. Generally we'll store in Excel sheets or CSV files. So any file you have a data, that data you need to read. So how can you read that data? So how can you read that data? So then, for example, you have data in the Excel sheet. How can you read that? Or you have data in the text file. How can you read to your Java program? So this is the one scenario. Reading the data from external sources, external files to your program. That's one scenario. The second scenario, you have data in your program. You want to write it to files. How can you write to the files? So these are the two scenarios important for us. How can you read the data? How can you write the data? Or one file data, how can you write to another file? So these are the multiple combinations. So let's go and see that. So if you understand this uh, file handling, all the file related classes are available in java.io package. I always input output stream, so related. This is the java.io package. You can find all the classes. So which are, so what are all the different classes? Let's go and see this. So for reading the data, you need to use file input stream, buffered input stream, reader, file reader, buffer reader. So on file class, these are the classes which are available in the java.io package. File input stream, buffered input stream, reader, file reader, buffer reader, file class. Basically, reader is an abstract class. Reader is an abstract class. And reader class, so reader is an abstract class. So as we discussed already, abstract class means. So the reader class is implemented in the different, different uh, subclasses like file reader, buffer reader classes. So file class again, so very important class which represent the file. So any file you want to represent, you have to create object and take the parameterized constructor. So and file input stream, buffered input stream. Basically file data will be streamed in the you know, network layers. Uh, by the either byte format or character format. So in the pockets, it will you know, transfer the data. So that byte data, how you will transfer and character data, how you will transfer. So that related classes are readily available for us. So this java.io package is available, all these classes. So if you want to use these classes, you first import this package and then you can use them. So file input stream, see that file input stream, you are inputting the data from files to the program. That's a, so you are reading from a file means you have to use file input stream class or buffered input stream. What is the difference between file input stream and buffered input stream? File input stream will read a byte data. Buffered input stream also will read byte data, but file input stream will read one by one byte at a time. Buffered input stream is large chunk of bytes at a time it will read. That means large volumes of data will read by buffered input stream. So buffered input stream alone you cannot use. You must use first to file input stream and then you can create object for buffered input stream. So File input stream object reference, you have to pass it to buffered input stream constructor as an argument. So these two will read the byte data. If any file you want to read a byte format, you have to create object for these two classes. 
and you want to read in the character format, you can use file reader and buffer reader. File reader, buffer reader you can use. Again, similar. So when, when you're using a buffering means a large chunk of data, it will read continuous streaming will happen. File reader means one by one character it will read. So it will take lengthy process. Then when you will use buffering concept, obviously you have a large data in the files, then you must use the buffer concept. So buffer reader and buffered input stream classes you need to use to quickly read the data. So that's a buffering uh, advantage here and while reading time. So, but the classes doesn't do, right? The action is done by methods only. Those methods are here. Read method, read line method. So read method will read the data either by, so byte format or character format. Read line will read the entire line. So read line will read the entire line. So that's the, so reading process is done by these methods. Once you create object for these classes, then only you can use these methods. Otherwise you cannot use. With object reference only you can use. Because these methods are implemented in these classes. Because the reader is an abstract class, right? So these methods are implemented in the child classes. And then you have data in the program. You want to write it to a file. How can you write? For writing process, you're outputting. That's why you can use a file output stream class, a buffered output stream class, writer class, file writer, buffered writer. So basically, uh, so this file output stream, buffered output, so you want to write a byte format. You will use it. So file output stream and buffered output stream class. And a writer object, writer class, basically just an abstract class. And you can use file writer and buffer writer if you want to write a character format data. So that's the writing process. These are the two classes you will use. Uh, one, one set is for byte data writing purpose. Another set is for character format if you want to write. So that's the, so this writing process, how you can do that. And let's go and see the you know, coding uh, so that you will get a better idea. Here for writing process, you have to use few methods. Again, classes doesn't do any action. Classes have methods. There's a write method. So new line method, flush method is another very important. The, when you're using a buffering, you must use a flush method. That's very important. So old stream should flush out, then new stream will come. So that purpose unit is a flush method. Then it will write it to properly. And uh, now let, let's understand this, how you can use, okay? See that. First, you have to create object for a file class. File class, you have to create object, file f equal to new file, and you need to give the file location. Okay, where is the file? First, you should have a file, right? Which file data you are writing. That file already, you should create that, and that has a date. That should have a date. Then only you can read. Otherwise, you cannot read, right? Without uh, data. And uh, the precondition is first you should create the file in some location and that location you represent with a file class. File f equal to new file. See, this is the parameterized constructor, right? This entire thing is an object, but still, and this one is only file. Parenthesis is, this is parameterized constructor. And now you want to read so then you have to use a file input stream class object you have to create fs equal to new file input stream and pass this file object reference as a an argument for the file input stream constructor. See all parameterized constructors we are using here. Then if you want to use a buffered input stream, create object for the buffered input stream, bs equal to new buffered input stream and you pass the fs object here. So there's a dependency 
one and the other, right? So then, then you have a file reader and buffer reader. So file reader and uh, buffer reader also same. So you create object for a file reader, fr equal to new file reader and file path. So then, so buffer reader class provides buffering to our file reader. So you can create a file reader fr equal to new file reader and give the file path and buffer reader. So reader equal to new buffer reader and pass the file reader object here. So you, you can specify buffer size. So if you want, see here single parameterized constructor, right? Here two parameterized constructor you can use. So that's how you can control the size also. But basically, at a time 8192 characters, it will read by default. You want to control that and you can specify. So you can specify, okay, 1000 characters only you read at a time. So when you use a buffering, 1000 characters, you can tell that. Just giving an example of this, how much you want, you can give that. That many characters it will read. So that's the, we'll see the code and uh, writing process also. First you have to create object for file class. Then you create the file. If file is not there, create a file. So there is a method in the file class, create file. And if you don't have file, you can create the file. You can create the file with the file object reference dot create new file concept is there. So and also you have uh, if file doesn't exist, then only create. So you can write the logic, some logic with the control structure concept if conditional statements. Okay, so first create a file class object and file is not there, create the file. If file doesn't exist only, you create. If file exists, don't create. So then you create object for a file output stream. FOS equal to new file output stream. When you want to write, you need to use this. If you are not writing, you should not use these classes. New file output stream file location. So buffered output stream, buffered output stream. So buffered output stream, BOS equal to new buffered output stream. So pass FOS. So file writer and buffer writer also you can use the same way, but you have to use write method, flush method, new line method. So file writer FW equal to new file writer. So file path. Uh, so, for example, you want to append, right? So, you can use, so this one, by default, it will override the data in the file. You want to append, then you can use file writer, fw equal to new file writer, file path, and you can say append. So, the next time when you are writing, old data and new data will be both available. That's appending means. So, append with the old data. That's what the this two parameterized constructor you are using. If you use a single parameterized constructor, every time you are writing, old data will be erased from the file. Only new data will be available in the file. That's a, you need to understand the parameters here. For file writer, if you use one parameter, that will overwrite. If you use this one, two parameterized constructor, it will append the data. Okay, so that's uh, all about this. Uh, by default, it will be false here. So that's why it will override. You need to tell, okay, you want to override or you want to append. 
so that we'll see all this you know code let's go and uh, you know uh, write the so reading the data from the file uh, one by one so i'll just let me take this uh, file handling complete code i'm taking let's go here Okay. So first, uh, no, let's go um, file input stream demo. So here also you have to use a try catch blocks. You must use try catch blocks in the file handling also. Database connection, you have to use a try catch finally. File handling, you must use a try catch finally. Mandatory. So that's why you see we are repeating the exception handling, and that's a very, very important topic. This exceptions. So as I mentioned already, so if you want to close the input output streams, you will use this so finally block, right? So that's what I mentioned. So same thing we are going to do that. And uh, See that first I'm declaring. Uh, so how to declare a global reference variable I'm showing here. Private static file. See, object reference as a null we declared. Here also I declared global reference variable as a null. See this object reference, this one, object reference. So this value I'm going to pass in the main method. Initially, you can declare null, object value as a null. So now see, f object as a null declared. f is also declared as a null. That's okay. But when you're using that f and f is, you must pass the object address for that. So here you can see that. I'm just calling only f. I'm not writing again the data type. File, I'm not writing again because I already declared globally. So that I can use in any other methods also. That's how you can declare an object reference globally. And you can use that reference in wherever you want. So f equal to new file. See, that is the input file. So here, the file is there. See Java program. So let's go and see whether that is there or not. See Java programs. It's not there. Yeah, it's not there. So we have to create. If it is not there, we have to create. Okay, so let's go and create the same folder earlier. Otherwise, I'll change. We have in the different place documents. We have Java programs. Mm. They're also not there. So I'll create better. Okay, let me create. So I'll go and create uh, in C drive and uh, let's go and create a new folder. So that is Java programs. So under this, I need to create a one file. So let me create a one text file, input file. Okay, it's not there, right? Let's go and open this. There is no data, but I'll add, okay? I will add. So let me add the data here. So I'll add this data. Just adding some sample data, okay? Just save it, okay? Just save this data. So done. I'm closing this. So now I have a data in my file that is stored in this location. Okay, so the same path, C Java programs. Okay, same path is there here also. C colon Java programs input.txt. So the complete file path you need to provide with extension. Okay, now new file, that's the input file path. That's I'm passing. The file location I'm passing. 
and then see try catch finally so f a is equal to this this object value i'm passing new file input stream and file reference i'm passing from this file i'm reading the file input stream will read right read initialize your you know what where you are starting while i equal to f a s dot read method not equal to minus one what is the meaning of that f a s dot read will read the one by one byte data minus one means not equal to minus means last line the byte value so nothing is there means you will it will return a minus no data means minus one it will return that means last line if until that you start from the beginning you start from the first line to till last one by one character you read so the file input stream is one by one byte it will read right so it reads it reads from this file and stores here then i am converting that into character so it's an integer right integer means a byte byte is an integer value so it stores that i am converting into character how can you convert a integer to character you have to typecast it you have to typecast that's what i'm doing here I'm typecasting, then I'm printing that. Catch, file not found exception. For example, so in this location, you don't have file, then you'll get a file not found exception. So e dot print stack trace. Finally, what I'm doing, I'm closing this. That's what I told you. Stream closing purpose, file closing purpose, you will use a finally block. That's what I told. So same thing we are using. So we discussed this and finally block explanation time. Close method. So let's execute this. See that? Same data. It read that. This is the data there in that file. Okay. So same one. You can do buffered input stream. So this is the file input stream, right? File input stream means byte by byte it will read slowly. If you use a buffered input stream, the speed of reading will improve. That's it. That's the difference. Because a large chunk of data at a time it will read. That's why. So then you have to use extra what it is adding previous class and this class. Extra you are adding buffered input stream object. BAS. Now that is the one you have to add. See the same, file is same, but I'm adding extra buffered input stream. So new buffered input stream and add the file input stream object. So int i equal to zero while i equal to bas dot read not equal to minus one. Charc equal to character of i. So system dot out dot print c, just printing. So not print ln. If you use println, every character will go and print in the next line. So that's why you have to use print method, not println. And then catch block. So if this file is not there, you'll get a catch block. Let me show you that also. Uh, so let's execute this. Same uh, output will be written to you. Same output. For example, this file, input one. So input one is not there in this, right? In this path. Input one is not there. That's why it should throw what exception? File not found exception. See that file not found exception. So the system cannot find file specified. How to debug this? See null pointer exception it is throwing somewhere. It is, it is going to give a clear indication. So this one, line number 21 here. It is trying to find. So the try block is failing to find this file. That's why it came here in the catch block and it's thrown and then 32 line. 32 line means the file fs is to note here also exception occurred. So fs is null because this is throwing error in this line itself. That means that line is not executed at all. Still, the fs is null only. On that null variable, what we are doing, we are calling the 
close method. That's why null pointer exception also throwing that. If you want to handle this, you can just uh, put this line of code in the try catch block again. So otherwise, leave it. So just you know, uh, file is not there. What will happen? I want to show. So now I before it was there, I deleted. But again, we created now today, right? So that's why if, without having file, if you run the program, it should clearly tell us, okay, file is not there in that location. That's why it is throwing file not found exception. So any questions till now? That's a reading the data from file to our program. And I'm just printing. So this is, you, are, you got it here. Next, you want to use anywhere you can use, but I am printing. So if you don't want print, leave it. Or you want to use that data, you can use anywhere. Okay, so next one, file reader and buffer reader, right? So let's go to directly, uh, buffer reader only we have written and we'll uh, see that. See this, this is the input.txt and uh, file object, reference variable, file reader, fr, buffer reader, br. So first you, pass the f reference object value that is new file and input file and fr equal to new file reader br equal to new buffer reader string s equal to null while so why string we have taken because the buffer reader will read the entire line so large chunk of data right there are more characters more characters means it's a string so that's why we took a string so file input stream and buffered input stream, why, to, uh, why we took an integer? That's a byte data it will do. That's why. So while s equal to br dot read line is not equal to null. That means last line only it will return for you null. No data. That's why. But so you are starting from the beginning and it will go till last and you will get the data. That data you are printing. So print ln here I took y. Every line is new line. So that's why you have to print in the next line only. That's why so print ln we took here. And then I o exception e and e dot print stack trace. Br dot close. You're closing the br. And uh, so if br if you close, uh, automatically fr also will be closed. Or if you want, write fr dot close also. So just print the same data it printed. So this is the reading process. Any questions? Before going further, that's a reading process, simple reading, okay? And writing process. So you want to write the data, right? So how to write the data? So for writing the data, you have to use a file output stream file output stream you have to use. See, first file class, file input stream. So this scenario is one file data you're writing to another file. Okay? One file data you're writing to another file. That's what I'm doing. That's why I'm reading for this input.txt file and writing to output.txt. So here output.txt is not there. Can you see only input.txt is there. That's why I need to create that file. So here I'm creating file, out file equal to new file, output file path. So this reference. So that means I'm referring the this uh, reference with the file, output file path. If out file dot exist method I'm calling, that means it doesn't exist. 
doesn't exist this if this out file doesn't exist then create a new file so it will create automatically you don't need to worry whether it is there or not you don't need to check that's the condition based we are putting it will create on this condition then create a file object again another file object for the referring the input file path so f equal to new file that input file so you're reading fs equal to new file input stream and passing this and fos equal to new file output stream you're passing out file reference so int i equal to zero and try catch blocks you're reading the data okay then i'm writing fos dot write and this data i'm writing so i'm writing the, that data and catch block and finally block i'm closing fos dot close fos dot close just run this so i'm printing and you go here and you can see output file is created just now 610 see same data written okay so let's come back and we'll see buffering how to add for this same class.